going to minister a message on those that make the difference. Look at your neighbor and say, there are those that make the difference. Now that's what I'm going to speak about tonight. Those that make the difference. Now children of God, in every single generation, God has always had a man, a woman, or a people that made the difference. He has always had somebody that walked a separated, a denied, a crucified life. Now we're living in a time now that we're living in a great hour of a melting pot where everything and anything seems to be going on. And people have literally let down their standards Church people have literally lost their hope. Church folks have literally begun to pattern their lives after their environment and after things that are around them. And see, the degradations of sin don't never get no better. It just gets more degenerate. It gets worse and worse and worse. And instead of us patterning our lives after the word of God and after those that are walking in the light of the word, we look around to the majority. We look around to the things of the world and look around to things that are going on in the church world. Well, the church world has become almost a secular world. And you can't pattern your life after the world. You can't pattern your life after some weak-minded Christian, so-called Christian in the church. You've got to make a difference. You've got to be willing to stand up in the midst of all obscurity, in the midst of all trials and tribulations. You've got to be willing to make a stand. As I read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation, God has always had those that made a stand. Even when God called Abraham out of the land of Mesopotamia, I want you to know according to history, the people that dwelled in Mesopotamia were people that were lived an idolatrous life. They worshiped idol gods. They worship images, but God raised up a man by the name of Abraham. The Bible said that God called him, and he called him a Lord, and he blessed Abraham. He brought Abraham out of the midst of a bunch of idolatry, brought Abraham out of the midst of a bunch of chaos, amen, and God raised him up. Even in the days, amen, when the Bible said how the, in the early days of the, of the word after Adam fell, and how did men, amen, begin to sin, and even in the days of Noah, how did God look upon the sons of God? How did they look upon the daughters of men and saw that they were fair? And they took them for wives. And the Bible said God spoke and he said, oh, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For men's thoughts are evil continually. And the Bible said that the earth was, was filled with violence. But even in the midst of all the darkness, in the midst of all the chaos, God had a non -consumers. God had a man that was willing to stand up. Even though there were no churches, were no where to go, were no denomination standing up for the world. Some of us are going to die without an excuse tonight. We talk about ain't no churches. We talk about preachers ain't living right. And we walk around trying to use an excuse. But in the days of Noah, was there no churches? Was there no denomination? Were no bishops? Were no moderators? But even in the midst of it, Noah was a non-conformist. But the Bible said that Noah was righteous and perfect in his generation. God always got a man. God always got somebody that's going to make the difference. God always got a light in the midst of darkness. It may not be but one or two lights, but God is going to always have somebody that's going to stand up in the midst of all the sin, in the midst of all the darkness, and it's going to make the difference. No one made the difference, even though, hallelujah, people fought him, people talked about him, and the people ridiculed him, people didn't want to hear the message. No one made the difference. God always got somebody going to make the difference. God always got somebody that ain't going to back down, ain't going to throw in the towel. God always got somebody that ain't got a give up spirit, a cop out spirit. God always got somebody with backbone. God always got somebody with integrity. That ain't going to break up under the pressure. Brother Noah could have broke up. But I'm going to will. But my God to keep a seed. God cannot let his seed die. There's got 
said you are your father of the devil. He said you are children of the devil. You are a generation of vipers. Even though the devil has a seed, the devil has a seed. He has a seed, but God also has a seed. And if the devil's seed can linger on, if the devil's seed can go on from generation to generation, if the devil can multiply and replenish, if the devil's seed is not given up, hallelujah, on down through the telescopes of time, there's yet children of wrath, there's yet children of disobedience. But if God is greater than the devil, if God is supreme, do you think that God will exterminate his people? Do you think the real saints of God are? I'm going to become like the bald eagle and become extinct. No, I got news for you, sisters and brothers. But the mark of God, you may fall, you may break, you may come out and backslide. But I want you to know that God got somebody in this generation that's going to make the difference. God got somebody in this hour that's going to make the difference that the world can have somewhere to look to. That the world can have a light in the midst of darkness. Some of you have lost your hope. Hallelujah. If I ain't got no hope for nothing else when I can be a light to this dying world, God let me live. Let me make the difference. If the preacher ain't compromised, if the preacher ain't hold on, if the preacher ain't breaking under the stretch, if the preacher ain't compromising and going away in the world, my God, every preacher church is becoming a bottle grow by the trolls. Every the memberships are growing so rapidly. Why? Because preachers ain't making no difference. They sit around with this little, this little Ishmael seed. They preach an Ishmael word, not a word that they done went in prayer and sought God about. Because if you're going in prayer and wait upon the Lord like Abraham had to wait upon the promised seed, it'll bring forth life, it'll revolutionize people's mind. But preachers are preaching this Ishmael seed and what it's doing, it's not taking people away from the world. And people are becoming more flesh minded. People are becoming carnal minded. This is a dark hour now. This is an hour of thick darkness. This is an hour where people want something that's going to pack their flesh. People are tired of suffering. They're tired of going through it. But the real Jesus message is a suffering message. The real Jesus message is a mournful message. The real Jesus message, sometimes the only joy that you get in a Jesus message is when you're witnessing, when you're praying. When you come to the house of God, other than that is sorrowful. It's a mortal way. Can you say that? We're living in a world of darkness. And dark and light, darkness don't like light. Uh, the Bible said men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. They're not coming to the light. Lest their deeds be reproved. What makes you think the world gonna love you? What makes you think that everything's gonna be alright with you? But my God, you're trying to make a difference in the world. When you're trying to walk out opposite directions of the devil. You look around the day, I see so many so-called Christians breaking up under the stress. They got no joy. They got no peace of mind. You know why? They can't make the difference. They're not those that are called out. That are walking with God. They're a bunch of cop outs, walk outs, ball outs. But God got some folk in this hour that's going to make the difference. God got some preachers in this hour that's going to be non-conformist. That's going to preach that word anyhow. They're going to come about from there, look at Donald Quarter. God got somebody. God got somebody. Even as he had Noah, hallelujah, people that refused to bow down, people that refused to compromise and conform to the ways of the world. We get our minds off the way of the world. We get our minds off of this gospel. When the Bible told us not to look to this first church, look at this charismatic church, look at these television preachers, God ain't never told us to look to them. God ain't never told us to look to the majority. But God said, look unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. He is the pattern children. Jesus is the pattern savior. And the Bible said as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. On yourself likewise with the same mind. You got a bunch don't want to suffer. You loyal hypocrite. All you want is the blessing. All you want is the fishes and the loaves. But where are those that are going to make the difference? Where are those that will be willing to wipe the tears from their eyes? And yet say, Lord, I love you. Where are those that can go home? When folk don't love you, they treat you right. And yet can make a difference in your home. With your husband's cussing, you make a difference and don't cuss back. When they treat you like a dog, make a difference. And don't treat them back like a dog. Make the difference, children. Where are those that will make a difference? We ain't making a difference now. Folk talk about us, we talk back. Folk 
to this world with you back. Ain't nobody making a difference anymore. Ain't nobody standing in the gap anymore. I refuse. I got discouraged because where the people was talking about me lifting up offers. Where I got the scrap. When I got the scrap to get offers. I got discouraged. And I said, I'm coming off the radio. I said, because God, we've been spending thousands of dollars. I said, I'm coming off. And God spoke to me and he said, son, I've chosen you to make a difference in this last day. He said, don't you compromise. He said, don't you worry about the people. He said, listen, you're a man of faith. He said, if they don't give it up, he said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And my God, I not only came, got back on radio, but I've gone on over station. I've come over in Denver, Colorado. Come this Monday, no, this Monday afternoon, this coming Monday, I come on in Denver, and I'm coming on in other station. They calling me out of Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. Maybe one day the president may cut my radio broadcast on Somebody! You think I'm a lighten up? You think I'm a 
the one around here let these women run around looking like a bunch of Jezebels and whores. Hallelujah, put face all painted up. Looking like a bunch of street corner prostitutes. You think I'm going to run around here let you walk around with splits all up here behind? You think I'm going to let you lean come in this church with a bunch of Jericho's and cutouts and fade outs and ponytails on the back of your head? No. You're looking at a preacher that ain't going to compromise. I'm going to lose every one of y'all and go down as a man that did not change and to sit around and compromise. I'm going to preach it coming in. I'm going to preach it going out. I'm going to put the trumpet to my mouth and cry out. Slow my trumpet inside and show the house of Jacob their sin and the house of Israel their transgression. There's got to be somebody that's going to make a difference. There's got to be somebody that's going to take us back to the place that we once walked in. There's got to be somebody. Shows. You think I'm going to go to a bunch of midnight musical? You think I'm going to let a bunch of big fat steak and sissies get in my church and play on my instruments? You don't think I'm going to do it? You think I'm going to compromise? You think I'm going to let the preachers keep on home on it? You think I'm going to do it? You think I'm going to let the church keep doing what it want to do? No! I come back, not my God and peace. I'm like Jehu. I come with a sword and I'm laying an axe to the will of the truth. You got to live for it.
people don't make the difference. We going on. Ain't gonna be no slipping and tipping. We going on. I'm good. God told me. I told God today. I, I, what happened? I'm gonna show you what happened to me. I had a dream last night. Hallelujah. And we got finished talking. And you told me that blind folk can feel, feel darkness. I had a dream last night, Dad. And in this dream, it was like some white men. They were like in the mafia. And I was sitting in the car. And somehow or another, I got a hold of these important papers. Y'all don't hear me. Some very important papers. And I begin to read the secrets of these important papers. And if you read the secrets of these important papers, I didn't want to go over all the way. You had to die.
Ain't nobody making a difference. No one made a difference. My God, when them prophets of Ahab prophesied lies, they said, my God, Jehoshaphat said, is there any other? Is there any other in this, in this land besides these? And my God, Ahab said, yeah, there's one, but I don't like him. I hate him. He don't never prophesy no good to me. Jehoshaphat said, don't say that about it. Go get him, and I'm not going to sit down until you get him. And they brought Micaiah. And before Micaiah came, they told him, they said, listen, everybody's prophesying good concerning the king. Say, Micaiah, why don't you prophesy the same thing? But Micaiah was a non-conformist. Micaiah was one of those men that God had raised up to make the difference. And Micaiah said, it's the Lord God living. I can speak only what the Lord has spoken to me. And my God, when he got to Ahab, Ahab said, listen, Micaiah, tell the truth. Should we go up the river with Gideon or not? And Micaiah said, go on up if you want. Go on up! Ahab said, how long, how long should I have you need to speak nothing but the truth in the name of your God? He said, all right, you want the truth, don't you? I'm a non-conformist. I can't go the way these 450 prophets of Baal. They made eight 400 prophets of the grove. I got to tell the saith the Lord. He said, listen, I saw all Israel scattered as a sheep without a shepherd. I saw them scattered because they shepherd was smitten down like a dog. I saw them. But he said, not only that, they may be you accept the lie. Some of you been over in these churches accepting a lie. Some of you ended up these denominations accepting a lie. And God bring you out something and you go back you become like a dog looking up his own vomit you become like a sow that they've been washed go back in the wall and never mind the Bible said my God if you begin to reveal those things which were once destroyed you become a transgressor hallelujah and I want you to know the way of a transgressor is hard are you listening to me tonight and I want you to know how they said because you have listen to these lying preachers he said I saw the Lord sitting high and mighty upon his throne. And I saw this one and that one coming before the Lord, speaking on this matter, speaking on that matter. And I saw another spirit that come before the Lord and said, Lord, I'll persuade their hand. And God said, how? He said, I'll become a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And my God, God said, all right, go. Go! And my God, thou shalt prevail. Said to God, not the devil. God, not the devil. Some people right now's conscience is sealed with a hot iron. They can sin and ain't even got a heart to repent no more. People can lie. They don't repent no more. It's a dangerous thing to be able to sit up in the house of God and ain't got no heart of repentance. But then that dream, hallelujah, when that man told me I was gonna die. First thing come to my mind was to repent. First thing come to my heart was to get my heart right. There's people that lost their repentance. There's people that have lost their conviction. People ain't even convicted no more. Oh, but he said, I'll send a lying spirit into the mouths of all your prophets. I'll let you get around people and I'll tell you lies. And the sad part about it, I'll let you believe a lie rather than to believe the truth. I'll let you believe it than to believe the true men of God. He was trying to save your soul from the pits of hell. They promise you liberty. But the Bible said they themselves are bound by the devil. For the devil take them at will. They say we are brother bondage, but they are under freedom. But I want you to know any time you sin it and you can't stop it, you're bound by the devil. But any time you can let go of the devil's hand and walk opposite direction, you'd have been free at last. Can you say, man, I want to be free so I can make the difference. I want to stand up in this hour. Holiness ain't a strain to me. Holiness ain't a strain to me. Holiness is my life. And I told God, I said, I'm going back to the nip stitch. I'm going back to the little minor things. Hallelujah. I'm going back to the little minor things. Hallelujah. I had this little gold thing I put around my tie. And I remember about God. Hallelujah. And I wasn't wearing nothing like that. I took it. Some, it's, it's, it's real expensive. And my God I told the devil, I said, devil. I cleared off them $30 and $40 bottles of cologne. I got rid of them. And I said, God, I'm getting rid of everything that's not like you. I said, God, I'm going back to that nip stitch on it. And you can cause me to walk with favor with you. It caused me to walk in the room with you. I said, God, I'm lighting up on churches. I said, God, trying to show a love. But I said, God, I said, now you're going to give me wisdom to preach on the 
was. I said, put it back in my heart again. I said, God, let me get that help in my back like it was. And these folks start sharing me. I said, God, give it back to me. Put it back in my soul. That that drove them to the foot of the cross. That made a sinner uncomfortable. That made a backslider cringe in his very seal. I preached your hell so hot. That folks felt the very fire of hell upon the hill. I said, put it back in me. I said, I'm tired. I said, I'm tired. Give me a word. Give me a word, God. That'll make me walk the chalk line. Give me a word, Lord. That'll make me go to the plummet line. And walk like you want me to walk. I said, when I lighten up too long, when I'm backed up too long, when I got too casual with God. God ain't no casual, God. He ain't got no K. We ain't got no casual, God. God is a real God. God is a holy God. And he said, be ye holy. I'm going back. We're going back. Hallelujah. When we were convicted to wear head covers, but now we're coming to church, no head covers on. Little girls ain't got no head covers on. We're going back. I'm going to make the difference in this city. And if you don't like it, get your rusty self all the way from me. But I'm going to preach this word. I'm going to preach it so help me God. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach conviction in your heart about God's Sabbath like I did before. I'm going to preach conviction in your heart about the word of God like I did before. We're going to tighten up this thing. We're going to tighten it up. And if you don't want to get on back over to these middle of the world, these old faith charismatic churches, that ain't preaching no standard. People are living like them. I don't care if they do cry. I don't care if they got them out of I don't care if they do look like they got the praises of God. Let me tell you something about the devil. Jesus. Judas wasn't no devil. He didn't just become a devil at the feast in the upper room. No. Jesus said it way before they went to the upper room and said, Have not I chose 12 of you? And one of you, what is? But when he called his 12 apostles together, he gave them 12 of them. I'm going to show you, you better know God. I'm going to show you something. Y'all sitting around here thinking you're going to do this. Oh, you're so devil and smart. I'm going to show you something. You better try to pray that God let you be his elect. That you be not fooled. He gave them 12 of them. Let you know I'm telling the truth in the book of Acts, the first chapter, the Bible speaks of how that Judas partook of the ministry. And according to the word of God in the book of Psalms, said another shall take his bishopric. Yeah. Judas! The devil. Cast out devils. Yeah. Judas! The devil. Healed the sick. Yeah. Judas. The devil even raised the dead. Because the Bible said they came back, leaping and rejoicing, saying, Jesus, even the devils, was subject unto us through that day. Now, y'all think that the Antichrist, somebody said, well, Pat Robinson, boy, Pat Robinson get the presidency, you better be, you better pray your heart out. He may be a Christian on his way in, but when he get in, he ain't going to be a Christian long. You think that, the, you think, see, the, the Bible called Judas the son of perdition. Judas was the man of sin incarnated. He was the man of sin. But the man of sin did miracles. The man of sin cast out devils. The man of sin even raised the dead. But the man of sin was a thief. The Bible said, listen, for there's no more. For he dealt with himself and has transformed himself into a, a what? An angel of has even made himself an angel of wisdom and knowledge. The devil will take the Greek, the Hebrew, the lexicon, he'll take that word and he'll bring that word out to you and you think you're on your way to heaven. But the Bible says the blind will leave the blind and they all will fall into the ditch. The Bible said that 
And many shall follow after their pernicious ways. By whom? The way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. Don't they speak against this truth? Don't they tell y'all that y'all keeping the commandments is under bondage? Don't they tell y'all that you're wrong? That you ain't right? They speak evil of this truth, don't they? They say y'all crazy. No, but you steady going around them. And you don't even know what you're doing. I'm going to preach this thing until Jesus gets here. We got the fellowship. We got the fellowship. The book of Acts didn't fellowship with anything, and anything didn't fellowship with them. The Bible said that people feared. No man just durst join himself under them. Not anything can come around us. Any old cigarette sucking, pot puffing, hole chasing, sissy, lesbian, any old thing, any old hypocrite preacher can get in our presence and feel comfortable. Men don't feel comfortable in this church no more. You better slow down, brother McCord. You don't. You know we got churches to pay for. Father, let the devil back me up all run revivals in Bangladesh, China, and bring back the end money. Say that. Somebody's going to have to get some backbone. Somebody's going to have to make, in this generation, Brother William, somebody's going to have to make the difference. My car, you made the difference. My car prophesied the truth. King Nebuchadnezzar. Lord, that hypocrite God raised him up to bring the children of Israel into Egypt like in the, in the Babylon. Instead of him walking in the knowledge of God, he's going to wreck him a golden image. And he's going to make he, he got he going to make everybody, he got him an orchestra. You got these churches now that got orchestras. They got orchestras. And folk is bowing down to the orchestra. Folk is worshiping these big old buildings. Folk is worshiping these praying hands. Folk is worshiping this stuff. He said at the sound of the music, let us bow down. That's why I told the Lord, I ain't thinking about no television ministry. If, if a television ministry come to me, I mean, if, they, if I build any television, that tell somebody got to give it to me. I ain't seeking after it. I ain't seeking after it. Somebody said, well, you're on the radio. There's a different spirit come upon you. How many know when you see yourself on them videos, a different something comes on you? Say amen. See, it's easy for me to come down off the radio because don't nobody see me. They don't really know who I am. They just hear my voice. But if I'm on that TV and I know everybody's seeing my face, and I know that my God, my budget is getting high, and, and people are stopping giving to me, and I, I can't just afford to just let my face go down because somebody allowed to see me at the grocery store. Aren't you that preacher used to be on TV? So they got to keep the image up. It's a different spirit. I can put this church on radio. We can come off the radio. Nobody ever see the church. But I put this church on television, and if this church get to a place where something happened, it, it's, it's bad for the church. You take when Rex Humbard was on television. He tried to come on PTL, and when he did, people still just looked at him like, that's the guy that used to be on TV. That's the guy that used to have some. I wonder what happened to him. If Jim Mecca would have been on tele on the radio, he would his fall wouldn't have been so hard. If he'd have been on the radio, his fall wouldn't have been so hard. How many of y'all heard of a man named David Epley? Anybody ever heard of David Epley? You've heard of him? You've heard of him? You know, some years ago he went through a real bad trial. You know, he was on radio all over the world, right? But he went through a real bad trial. And God brought judgment on him. But do you not know when he came on radio, nobody even said that? Scandal was just as big as that guy that was on television. Just as big. How many of you ever heard of Peter Popoff? Did you not know that he had a scandal just as big as Jim Baker's? But it didn't affect him. He can get started again. He can come on television with Bob Hill. Because he was just on radio. 
But that television, people don't know, but that television is the devil's tool. When you don't get on the devil's territory, that can even go crazy. Those people in the Bible did not conform. You know, this man gonna raise up, he, everybody bowed out at the sound of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the orchestra. But they had some non-conformists that made the difference. I'm not about, man, don't you know, I could just back up on a few of my principles, go letting you women wear earrings and make up and, and, and wear a bunch of spit tail dresses and let y'all come to church and choir rehearsal with your britches on. Back up and go to letting y'all just do what you want to do, don't preach no Sabbath. Lighten up and let a few of you women go to pastor some of these churches I got. A lot of you, y'all, you ain't nothing but a bunch of compromise. I don't care, my God, my, my auntie was a preacher. Both of was with me. My auntie was a preacher. I stood flat-footed in my house, in my mama's house. And I preached holiness to my grandma. I preached holiness to my auntie. They turned their nose up at me. I stood for holiness in the hell. I stood for it in the hell. Martha told me you crazy. I said it's wrong. You know it's wrong. Yeah. Ain't nowhere in the Bible it's right. And I ain't coming nowhere to hear you preach nothing. I ain't gonna strengthen the hand of the wicked. It's sin. Anytime a woman ain't under obedience and say the law, she's a transgressor. And I'm not gonna be partaker of your sin. If you ain't under, if you ain't, if you worship the Father, you ain't no more under obedience. That's the word. So you sin. And I ain't coming to your church. I'm not going to preach for you. Amen. I'm going to make a difference, you hear me? Somebody say you ain't got love. What do you like? You want to go around a bunch of, bunch of cocaine snippers? Just because I want to be their they friend? No, the Bible said don't have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Repeal them. Well, prove that man. you can set up in these midnight musicals. You can set up and spend your money to go and hear all these, all these old entertainers and, and all that kind of mess. Ain't nobody talking about Jesus. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make a difference. You know, slick heads, cigarette sucking quartets coming to this church. They may have had it before I got it, but they ain't going to have it now. Since this church will make a difference. This church gonna make a difference. You can say what you will to me. We're gonna make a difference here. If you preach woman, you better preach in laws because if I hear anything about it, we're gonna make a difference over this group here. Say amen. I don't care who's condoning it. I don't care if they're calling fire down out of heaven. The Bible says wrong. The Bible says wrong. But everybody wants to go on. They blew that sign up trouble. Them three Hebrew boys was made the difference. They said, we ain't bowing. We ain't going to beg. And we ain't, we ain't, we ain't going we to sit up here and bow down to your mess. You lying devil. You, if our God don't deliver us, be it known unto you, okay? We ain't bowing down. How many, how many, how many people tonight do we have going to make the difference? The world dying and on its way to hell because we done stopped making a difference, trumpet and Zion. We the ones convict these preachers and convict these folks in this city. They may, they may get mad, but they know I'm preaching truth. But look at us. We just done dropped out dudes. We, uh, we, were the, we were the ones that God, God didn't give us this truth for us to get over here and go to be in a bunch of charismatics. God didn't give us this truth for us to be a bunch of conformists. God put us in this city, in this area, on these radios, to make a difference. Living in a kind of way, doing a new kind of thing. The Bible said, if the salt has lost its savior or its saltness, where will shall it be salty? It is good for nothing but to be trodden 
to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You know what? You know what? You know what happens to churches when they take down and lose their softness? It fills up with a bunch of carnal men, and they trodden down the spirit of God and make the church a sister. When the church loses its standing, some man come in out of Shady Grove or some woman. Pastor, how do we have a fashion show? They try. Pastor, the choir is good, but Pastor, they're going to lose interest if we don't do something in a hurry. We need to have a battle of the choir or a midnight musical. shows for the children trying under the foot of man. <laughs> now in the book of Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, the fourth verse, it was a custom that when a baby was born, they would wash it and rub it down with salt. They would salt that baby. That salt has come from a Greek word which means prudence. See, prudence ain't nothing but wisdom. And wisdom, the Bible said, wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is that right? Well, because the fear of the Lord is to hate pride, is to hate uh, uh, arrogance, and to hate every evil work. Is that right? So that means that, uh, that salt represents a people, a people that got saltless. There's a people that's going to make the difference. A people that got the wisdom of God that stands up for holiness, that stands up for righteousness, that makes a difference in the world. Politicians on their toes. The church used to keep the world convicted. The church kept the world convicted. The church. Now the church, the lost is salt. Salt. Let me give you a bunch of salt to eat. You know. The way they used to catch uh, deer, wild animals over in Africa, they put salt out in the ground. And these deers and these zebras and all that would come by and lick that salt. And you know what they would do? They would lay, they would set the traps by the water holes. They put that salt out there and they would set by the water holes where the water was because they knew if you keep eating that salt, you're going to get thirsty. And they'd wait and here come the old deers and them zebras and all that over there where the water hole was and they'd catch them every time. Jesus said, I am the living water. He that believeth on me Shall never thirst. I'm the living water. I'll give you to drink freely of the fountain of life. We, the church, we're the salt of the earth. We're the ones that actually make the world thirsty. We are the salt that actually make the world thirsty for Christ, but we have lost. There used to be a time when they would see the joy, when they would see your holiness, when they would see your peace, when they would see your confidence and your faith in God. It made the world want to come to your church, made the world want to see what you had, but not no more. There used to be the Baptist. The holiness church was the salt of the earth. Baptist people, Methodists would get out of their church and run and over to the holiness church, peeking in the windows. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. But look at us now. We ain't no different than they are. Now holiness folk running over to the Baptist church again. Yeah. Holiness folk changing their membership and becoming African Methodists. 
You done got them preached over, preach over the little couple miles, step out of cares, man. Now you run them back over there. Because you'd have lost your salt. But if you stayed salty, you wouldn't have to go to them. They'd come to you. They rub a baby down with salt, put salt on the outside of it. Look at it. They would put salt on the outside. We'll put it on the inside. But rub that baby down with salt. The Bible said they salted the children. They salted them. That salt means a prudence, an a, a, a outward holiness, an outward difference. And the Bible said, let your light so shine that who? Men, men, carnal minded men, carnal minded men can see your good works and what? Glory for your father, which is in heaven. Look at us. Our children ain't even convicted. Our children used to say, Mama, take me to church. Not no more. Your children look at your little ragged and lie. Say, Mama, I don't want to go to church. I'm going to stay at home and watch TV. We used to cause our children to want to be in church with us. We were salty. We made even our babies thirsty. We made even our children thirsty. Trouble inside, we made people thirsty. We lost out. Now, where we shall we be salty? That's why, that's why men is trotting you down. That's why folk on your job that used to fear you wouldn't try to rap to you women. Now men is trotting you up under their feet saying, baby. That's why women all up in your face and switching and throwing their legs off in your face. Preachers, you used to be you used to be salty. We used to be salty. When one of your people on your job would cuss, they said, oh, excuse me, brother, I'm sorry. They come to work and say, listen to this joke I got. We lost our saltness. Your husbands wouldn't even smoke a cigarette in front of you. When you first got saved, you were salted. Now you'll smoke a cigarette and dump some of the ashes on you. You've lost your softness. Now the devil's trying you up on his feet. He ain't good for nothing. To be cast out into the dung hill. Where are those that's going to make the difference? Where are those going to do like the prodigal son and I come to ourselves and say, Lord, take me back, give me back my salt. Samson! He made a difference for a while. But Samson lost his saltness. Samson made a difference, my God. Everybody feared Samson. They respected Samson. They knew he was a mighty man. But Samson lost his saltness. Oh, but my God. Samson recognized he lost it one day. He said, Lord, if you don't remember the stars in the sky, the sun in its place, he said, remember me just once more. Remember me just once more. God, give me back my first love. Give me back my saltness. And when I go to work, people won't be joking with me. Say and pray for me. I want what you got. I want what you got. You've lost something. You've lost our souls. Ain't nobody thirsty about your life no more.
If you got a conviction in your heart, you better thank God tonight. You better let that conviction drive you to these altars tonight. If you got that, you can just keep living like you want to, do it like you want to, living like you want to, and ain't nothing to drive you to the foot of the cross. Tonight, you can be the best turn over and don't even know it. But if tonight you can feel the conviction power of this word pricking your very heart, young children, if you can feel it. Saints of God, you better let that word drive you so far and so fast in them altars. And you better cry and tell the Lord tonight, give me back my songs. Somebody tonight, you see. Somebody say you never been my song next time. Man, I come to this song. I wouldn't get in the pews. I'd get up out of the pews. That's what the devil wants. I'd fall in that aisle at that altar that got too full. I'd get in them aisles. I'd get up away from them seats. Never trying to let you go to sleep and try to make. I'd get up out of them aisles. I'd get on up in the pulpit. Preachers, I'd fall from my knees. Brothers, I'd get up in the pulpit. Let them sisters get down. You brothers, get on up in that pulpit. Fall on your knees. Let them sisters get around this altar. Jesus, don't respect me. 